what if I told you that there are so many tips and tricks circulating in the social media that if one follows it, for sure, that person would push himself to this RIP zone. Wondering what is RIP zone? It's called rest in peace zone. Definitely all these tips will kill your scores. Well, if you're wondering what these tips are, then trust me, in this video, I've shown all the techniques, the tips and tricks, strategies that actually pushes you into this RIP zone. Want to make most out of this video? Make sure you watch the video till the end. Hey everybody, Nakul here from Skills Isles. Really hope everybody is doing fantastic. I'm back with yet another super awesome power packed video on RIP Isles, the tips that actually kill your scores. Well, before we get into the video, if not subscribe to this channel, kindly click on the subscribe button and anytime you need online assistance it's a paid assistance you can check the information in the description of this video we left a whatsapp link you can click on the link send us a message i'll be there we will be there to help you guide in the right direction all right without further delay let's start to get right into the video the first misleading tip about the speaking is people often telling you to speak fast so that your fluency would be nine 100 percent no you speak fast who will be there to understand what you speak what if i start speaking very very fast will you be able to understand anything i speak you will not be able to understand anything that i speak then what is the point of communication when you speak fast you rush the thoughts also have to rush but this tongue doesn't have much intelligence like your brain so tongue will you know keep complaining as a result it will not be able to twist you will not be able to pronounce the words clearly you will fumble you do the hesitation and lot many stuff marks will completely go down speaking fast is absolutely not required you go at a comfortable speed the speed with which you converse with your friends the same speed you need to have in your IELTS speaking when you're conversing with the examiner so that you will be natural naturality will just emerge and you end up having a very good conversation without fumbles basically you would do at your best when you speak naturally remember this if you're going very fast trust me you're gonna push yourself into this rip zone for sure remember this the second tip that actually kill your scores or push you into the rip zone is to use overly complex language very high five vocabulary you're using a synonym form of it absolutely fine but now you don't have to check google and try to remember a lot of synonyms and use them even when they are not making sense so i've seen people using some of the words which i myself have to look into the dictionary to understand or google says hold on wait I need more time to understand what is that word. To that level, people go. Trust me, see, it's your natural way of speech. When you talk naturally, how you end up doing that kind of a vocabulary, that kind of, you know, the speech is required over here because all they are testing is not just about complex things. If you go to Canada or Australia, how will you converse? When you speak, will others understand you? Then make sure you speak in a way that you often end up speaking in a natural environment. Well, a little modified version would definitely help you a good score. You know, taking it too deep and using overly complex language, overly high-fi vocabulary, even Google has to wait for it to understand what it is, would definitely not give a good score. All this will definitely push you into this rest in peace zone. Remember this. Let's have a look at this particular demo. So look at this very simple sentence. Pollution is getting worse mainly because of more factories. Governments need to create strict rules to protect the environment. Is there any problem with this statement? Absolutely no. This is 100% fine. Do you know what people often end up doing in the speaking test? Let me show you a modified, overly complex vocabulary or overly complex sentence version right now. The significant exacerbation. Exacerbation is to make something worse. Exacerbation of environmental pollution predominantly instigated by industrial proliferation necessitates the implementation of stringent regulations by the governing bodies to mitigate the deleterious effects on the ecosystem. Don't think you are Shashi Tharoor or you can become one and there is no need to become Shashi Tharoor in the exam. What it demands from you is to speak in a way you often end up speaking with your friend but need to be a little more conscious in using the right form of words, right vocabulary, right grammar. Don't use slang words. This will not give you scores. 100% this will not give you scores. Don't do anything intentionally just for the sake of it. Definitely all this will pull you into this RIP zone, rest in peace zone. <laughs> Remember this. Now we'll talk about writing, the misleading tips, the tips that actually kill your scores or push you into the RIP zone. The first thing is write more so that you score more. 100% no, you write more, you make more mistakes. Write what is required. You need eight pants, then two ideas in the second paragraph, two ideas in the third paragraph. You need seven pants. One idea is enough because if you're targeting seven, because you know that eight is not your criteria, then for seven, 
you write less because your English may not be so good. That's the reason you're trying for seven. That means when you write more, you end up making a lot of grammatical errors and so many other aspects to it, right? So don't write simply more, write what is required. Hope you're getting it. So having a correct structure like main idea, supporting idea, example will actually often end your paragraph with five or six sentences in second paragraph. Do the same thing for third paragraph. Six sentence structure, six sentence structure in body one and body two. More than enough, 300 words, 310, more than enough. Don't have to write 450, 550, 600 words. The more you write, 100%, you will make more mistakes. Um, don't fall for this trap. If you fall for it, definitely. You will be pushed to this RIP zone. Remember this. The second misleading tip is use a formal style with a very high level vocabulary. See, formal vocabulary doesn't mean advanced or high level vocabulary. Use apt vocabulary, whatever is required for the situation. The situation demands it, right? That particular word you write, simply changing the synonym, simply using a very complex language will not in any way give the marks. Use apt words, the words that actually fit in with respect to that particular sentence. This is what his vocabulary means. If you don't do it and simply try to use by memorizing all those hundred words that get you nine, definitely all those hundred words <laughs> will push you to this RIP zone. Remember this. The third tip that actually pushes you to this RIP zone is read the question and start writing immediately without wasting any time because time is a very crucial factor. 40 minutes, you will not have a lot of time. That, this, all this will push you into this RIP zone. Rest in peace zone. Hope you are getting it. See, once you see the question, take time. Because all it matters is the task response. For you to write a perfect task response, meaning to generate the right idea, first you need to understand what is asked, which idea they are looking at. Correct? If you don't understand this, just look into question and start writing. 100% no, you most probably make those mistakes in generating the right ideas. Let me just give you a small demonstration on the mistakes that people end up doing with respect to writing wrong ideas. Here you go. So look at this question. Some people believe that the use of social media is replacing face-to-face -face interaction among people in society. Do you agree? The use of social media is replacing face-to-face -face interaction. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. People will, you know, be very busy in social media. They're often doing calls, video calls, and they never meet and talk. This is the right idea. But look at the answer, what is written. Social media platform has become an integral part of modern society. Platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram allow people to connect with others across the globe. This platform provide a convenient way to stay in touch with friends and family. And they also have become important tools for what are the applications of social media. Then this is perfect. Social media will replace face-to-face -face interaction. This is not the answer. This is not what is asked. Well, this is written and telling you by a student who joined our course two days back, sent this first essay and we told him the mistake. So because of that, I'm making this particular thing. Don't write immediately. The moment you read a question, have a structure, main idea, supporting the example, second paragraph, main idea, what will I write? Oh, this is what I'll write, main idea. Is it really fitting to the question? Yes, it is. What a supporting idea for this? Let me think, let me think, let me think. I think I'm not getting it. Let me start writing. No, it's okay. Think. When you write, you will not be able to think. You will be in a rush. Two, three minutes, two max or in the worst case, three minutes you can devote in the beginning to structure. This is supporting idea. Oh, this is example. Second paragraph done. Now third paragraph. This is main idea. This is supporting idea. This is example. Oh, this is done. Is it fitting in? I think no. Third paragraph, one idea is wrong. Let me replace it. Now is it fitting in? I think yes. Is it really fitting in? I think mostly yes. Is it really fitting in? I think yes. Now let's start writing. Because once you start writing and then in the end you realize the entire thing was completely gone, then what is the use? Think about it. In the beginning, take time. Structure it. Two minutes, devote it. If not, if you're not doing it, you are pushing yourself to that RIP zone. Remember this. The next misleading tip that actually pushes you to the RIP zone is, in the social media, I've seen many people telling to use the entire 40 minutes to write, 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 write. I've seen very few telling you to finish writing in 35 or 36 minutes. The remaining four minutes, proofread. Because when you proofread, you fix the spelling mistakes, you fix the punctuation, you fix the grammatical errors. There could be only simple sentences you would have written. You erase it and make it a compound complex sentence. Proofreading is a must. Even if you are an experienced IELTS student giving exam multiple times every week, proofreading is must. Two, three minutes I would definitely recommend in the end to proofread. For this, you need to plan your essay and finish in a way that you're still left with two, three minutes. If you don't do it and you have tendency of making a lot of spelling and grammatical errors, then this will definitely push you to the RIP zone. Make sure to have time to proofread. That's going to be a bonus advice. Trust me on this.
Now let's talk about the listening section. One of the misleading tips that actually push you into this rest in peace RIP zone is focus on keywords only. Few of the modules like MCQs or fill in the blanks, we will be waiting for that particular keyword. Yes, those keywords will definitely help you. But in some cases, what happens? If you solely, if you only rely on the keywords, most probably that would be a honey trap. They intentionally speak that keyword for you to write, but after that they'll be correcting it. So solely relying on the context, meaning listening skills. It's not just about listening, it's about sending from the ear to the brain for processing, interpreting, understanding what it means. Solely relying on this only will give you a comprehensive understanding of what is asked and what is the right answer. Every time just relying on the keyword will push you to the RIP zone. It may work 8 out of 10 times, but the remaining 2 times you will fall for the trap. So every time you need to go with the context, yes, rely on the keywords. Focus probably 80% on the keywords, the rest 20%. You need to give preference to the context. Sometimes they intentionally speak those keywords for you to fall into those honey traps. Don't do it. Rely on the context. If you don't rely on the context and just rely on the keywords, perhaps you're just pushing yourself to this RIP zone. Remember this. The another misleading advice in MCQ's listening module is people often tell you, listen to the instruction. The instruction says, in this audio, Plessy, Kathy and Robert are having a conversation. First 30-40 seconds they talk about this man. This is absolutely not required. In MCQs what you need is the reading skill. See MCQs listening is the test of your reading and listening skill. Two skills are being tested. If you just listen to the audio and then try to look into the question and then answer options, selecting the answer would take a lot of time. You would not have those time. So in the beginning don't read any instruction. All the questions will come in the same order. You would know it in advance. The moment you see part 3, it's going to be the MCQs. Don't listen to the audio. In the beginning, they're going to give you some 40 seconds to read. After that, they'll start the conversation. In the beginning, some 20 second conversation not really required to touch. You don't have to listen to it. So 30-40 seconds preparation time plus some 15-20 seconds of the audio. When the audio begins, the first 15-20 seconds is again a waste. One minute you actually get 40 seconds plus 15-20 seconds, 60 seconds approximately one minute you get to read question option, read question option. Do this for the entire question. If you get time, revise them. So you would know what is asked and what you need to be listening to in the audio. You do this, things will fall in place. You don't do this all the time. You will complain saying listening MCQs are always difficult, difficult, difficult. And with this mindset you give exam. You are just pushing yourself into this RIP zone. Remember this. Let's talk about the reading misleading tips. The first misleading tip is to skim through everything. Let's say you have this information matching. The strategy for information matching is not skimming. It is skimming and scanning. You skim with a word in your mind to scan. The moment you find that word you will stop. But most of the people, what they end up doing, they skim everything and once they're done, then again they start with the one word to scan. This is time consuming. See, reading is all about timing. Given 60 minutes, 40 questions, this equation should match. If it is 5 hours for these 40 questions, everybody will get 9 bands. It's just 60 minutes. That's where the problem starts because fast reading skill strategies matter the most. If you're just reading everything at once and then going back and repeating, 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 especially information matching of seen students, doing it again and again and again and again and again, time consuming, definitely you're gonna push yourself into the RIP zone. So how to basically do, you need to skim and scan. Soon I'll make a video on information matching, stay tuned. But before that, if you want an awesome technique here, you got to skim and scan at the same time and watch out for that particular word. And that word will not be exact match in terms of spelling it would be a synonym mostly it would be a synonym so with this you need to skim and scan with a visualization technique book and library when you both visualize these words they both match when you're just waiting for the word book to appear in the paragraph it may not come as a result word is not matching you may not get it so it's basically visualization plus skimming and scanning and many aspects to it if you don't follow this and just keep on reading it you may definitely push yourself into the RIP zone. Remember this. The second tip that actually pushes you into the RIP zone in your IELTS reading is about match heading. I myself have told this many times to rely on first two and the last two because first two and the last two will usually be a summary. Usually, that's what I told, but not all the time. You read the first two, you read the last two and you're convincingly picking up one particular option as the answer and none of the others are matching. Go with it. But what if? You're not convinced with this particular data as a heading. 
Now you got to read the rest. You got to read. You got to read. There is no other option. Remember this. Don't just stick to this one particular technique. First two lines, last two lines because it's very easy. If that works, well and good. But if you're not convinced, even by 1%, you're not convinced. 99% you're sure. But 1%, somewhere you have a doubt. I think this is not perfectly matching as the heading to this paragraph. Then you got to read full. You got to read full. You got to read the entire paragraph and get the gist of it. Meaning skimming. You need to skim and get the gist of it. If you don't do it, it may work for two, three match headings. The rest four, five match headings. You're just pushing yourself to this RIP zone. Remember this. All right, I really hope I've made an informative video giving you right insights on the tips that actually kill your scores and push you to the RIP zone. If you think the video was informative, like, share and subscribe and leave your valuable comments in the comment section. With this, I'll park the video here. This is Nakul, N-A-K-U-L. Nakul signing off from Skillsiles. Soon we'll be back. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks much.